Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for this day that we get to open up your word and look at it again, Lord. And we just pray that you would use Pastor Uzi now as a vessel to speak to each one of us, Lord. Let us, let us not only hear the word, let us be doers of the word, Lord. Let us sink deep into our heart this morning, Lord, and may we apply it to our life that we can, we can be people of good works, mm-hmm. full of faith. We ask that now in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Amen. I'm excited because the portion of scripture I've had all week in Arizona to mull over the next part of scripture that we're going to do this morning in 1 Corinthians 15. And I got to visit the fellowship that I came out of. John Higgins, I said, that sent me out. He goes, no, we didn't send you out. The Holy Spirit sent you out. He was very, you know, he got up after I got done. He had me share on the midweek service there. And, um, and he goes, we didn't do it. God did. You know, it's the Lord that sends people out and, and does those things. And I was like, wow, he's so humble, you know, he's a really kind man. So had a great time of fellowship with, our, with the church I came from and the folks there got to see some, so it was like family reunion time in the Lord and uh, it was wonderful. And, and so it just made me, I, I got to share from the first part of what we've been going over about how Christ in 1 Corinthians 15, if you want to look at it in verses 2 and 3, of first importance, Paul said, the first importance, of first importance the things of the gospel is that Christ firstly died for our sins. Secondly, he was buried, and thirdly, he did what? Most of this is the biggie. He rose. If he didn't rise from the dead, guys, this whole story would be wouldn't have any punchline. It would it would be powerless. It would be meaningless. But Christ rose from the dead, and we saw Paul say to the church at Corinth, "This is the this is really the the things the 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 real crux of our faith is that Christ rose from the dead, and." Because he is the firstborn of the resurrection, we get the privilege of being included as those that will follow after him in the resurrection. And that's what Paul is leading into. Now, sandwiched in between this, we saw an exhortation. And then we'll pick up with that verse 33 and 34 this morning where he says these words. He says, do not be deceived. Bad company does what? Corrupts good morals. Don't be deceived. You hang out with bad company, and it will corrupt good morals. And then he said, and stop sinning. Be sober-minded, as you ought to be. Stop sinning. He says, for some have no knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. If we continue to sin and act like it doesn't matter, it's really hard to make a witness for God that that there is a God. You know, when people say, "My my own youngest daughter, Raquel, said, Dad, you know, just have questions about faith and that's good you know that she's honest she's like how do i really know god is real and i said because you know the the bible tells us that jesus said i'm going to go to the father john chapter 14 i go to my father's house and my father's house are many what mansions and i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you he says i will come again and receive you to myself so that where i am you may be what You'll be also. He wants us to be with him. Anyone here up for a mansion? <laughs> Anybody want one? You know, like made by Jesus, prepared for you. I mean, when I, when I think about it, I, I can't even wrap my mind. The Son of God is preparing a mansion for me. Do you think he knows what I would like? In my ma- I mean, do you think, by the way, do you think our mansions might be different? Do you think he'll tailor them according to... You know, some of you are like, I want a lap pool, and I want this, and, you know. I'm like, I want a, I want a windsurfing kite surfer that, that flies on clouds, you know. I want to be able to, like, kite surf between clouds and windsurf, you know. Not, not the kind you ride on the water. I mean the kind you could just scooch through the air and carve and... But see, I think God knows everything about us, and we're all wired with those things, and he knows what's going to bless us. And Jesus said, I go to prepare that place for you so I can come again and receive you to myself. Now, I am so excited. I can't wait. This part of the scripture, what we're going to read, is Paul's going to talk about something that, as a, uh, starting off my ministry in youth, 
it was so fun to go back and see some of the I, I actually saw Seth Higgins the the young man that was John Higgins oldest son was in my youth group he's now serving as the assistant pastor to his dad now you might think that's a big deal but if you knew Seth when he was young and he even said it while I was there he he goes if you want to hear any bad stories about me as he was introducing so funny you know Izzy would know because he was like the the rebel rouser you know P, we call them PKs pastor's kids they're not always the most bestest kids in the group sometimes they're the know-it-alls well my dad's a pastor I know it all you can't tell me anything and they don't really know it all they just act like they do and he was one of the worst kids in the youth group and to see him serving the Lord alongside his dad as an assistant pastor today I can't tell you how much it blesses my heart I mean it's like wow Seth is serving the Lord I mean this is great and Jeremy his his little brother is pastoring a church in the Midwest. I'm like, woohoo! You know, these two were the worst ones in the group, and they're both serving the Lord. That's just cool. But, but I got the privilege of teaching them some things about the Lord, to plant seeds in their in their heart of that would bring faith. And my own daughter's got questions. How do you know that God is real? How, how do you know? How do you tell a, a teenager that you know God is real? Or that you knew God was real when, when you came to know the Lord when you were younger. How, did you, how do you explain it? Well, I explain it because Jesus said to his disciples in that same chapter when he talked about the mansions. Look at John 14 if you want. A little bit, just a just little bit further down, he says, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. He says, I'm going to go, but I'm going to send a helper, a helper that's going to be with you. And he's going to lead you. And he's going to guide you. He's going to teach you. He's going to bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now, who's the helper he's talking about? The Holy Spirit. Now, my daughter, this is a great question. How do you know God's real? Because God sent his Holy Spirit to me. And the Bible teaches us in Ephesians that that Holy Spirit is like a seal until the day of redemption, until the day we're, we're redeemed and brought into his kingdom, we have a seal over us. I used to teach the kids, it's like a force field. You know, you're sealing mealed, or you know, you're, you got this invisible protection around you. It's the Holy Ghost. And how do I know that He's real? Because that protection, that, that sealing that He has put around me, that, that I don't know, you, you can use a lot of sci fi today, you know, the invisible force field bubble, whatever. They, they can do Captain America or something in the, the little, you know, special effect or whatever. Just picture in the spiritual realm, I have one of those called the Holy Spirit. And how many can give an amen that you know the Holy Spirit has protected you in this life? Amen? amen. You know, like, you know. And when my daughter said, how do you know he's real? Because, man, you don't get it. Honey, the Lord has protected me so many times. And it also says that he convicts us concerning our sin. He doesn't condemn us, but conviction means he, he tells us that's not right. Don't do that. Stay away from that. It's like a warning system. I don't warn myself about sin. I don't know about you. When I'm about to sin, I'm thinking, I'm into this. But when this other voice comes into my head going, uh-uh, uh-uh, shouldn't do that, I'm pretty sure that's not me. Because me is going, I'm going to do this, and, and that other voice is going, no. Where's that voice come from? I mean, anyone can give an amen, you felt that? I mean, out of nowhere. You're just about to do something, and there's this voice. And you, it's not that it's an audible voice, is it? It's like an in. I mean, it's inside, talking right to direct. Message directed to you. You know. I mean, nobody else could even know. The voice could be so pronounced to you, you're going, wow, I can hear it. And everyone's everyone looking at you, what, hear what? Never mind, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I, don't want, I don't want to tell them, you know, what I was thinking, you know. <laughs> Maybe you're about to sin, and, and the Holy Spirit's going, don't do it. In my case, it's usually some guy's in my face, and I want to just knuckle print him, you know. And the Holy Spirit's going, put your hands down. Don't do and I know it's not me going, put my hands down. I'm pretty sure I'm wired for fight. When, whenever that voice says, put your hands down, let it go. Don't yell at that person that just cut you off. Don't try to park your car on top of them. 
You know, that's not easy. But my daughter's asking legitimate questions. How do I know God's real? Because his Holy Spirit convicts me concerning sin. And he protects me even when I'm weak. He can, he can deliver me from temptation, right? I mean, I dated my beautiful bride. We courted four and a half years before we married, all through college, my college sweetheart. The Lord, I finally just told my daughter, honey, I know that God is real because he, he protected me and kept me from, from blowing it with, with her before I was married. And that's a miracle for a hot-blooded Italian boy. That's a, I mean, my, I, I, someone's like, prove that there's a God. I didn't sleep with my wife before we were married. That's the proof. They say, that's not even possible. I said, that's what I said. There must be a God. That's really, it might sound like a, 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 a testimony that some people go, it doesn't matter. It does to me. Because, I mean, there was times when I was weak, and maybe she was weak, and the Lord had to send, I'm sure that there's an angel that masquerades as a pizza delivery boy <laughs> that shows up at dorm rooms in college, and he goes, pizza delivery, knock, knock, and he won't go away. You're just like, go away, man. Can't you tell I'm making a move here? And Knock, knock, knock. He keeps just knocking and knocking. And you're like, all right, you open the door. What do you want? And he's like, pizza for a room 713. This is 813, go away, you know? And then by then it's harsh the mood and, you know, interrupted just enough to put the brakes on. And, and, then, you, and then you look back and he vanishes. Where'd that guy go? You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, be careful lest you entertain angels, what? unaware you know they can show up and do stuff we just we just don't really give it much credit but I'm pretty sure I have one when I get to heaven he's probably gonna walk up in his little outfit and go pizza I remember you thanks for helping me because that's what he's doing he's helping me to not fall into sin you know Jesus said pray lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil you know the to me, that's the biggest proof I can actually give to a young person is that if God could get me through that, that was a big deal. That, you know, you have to go with what you're going through at that time. In my youth, that was big. That was really big. That God kept me from punching out some people that, you know, I literally knew that the Holy Spirit was real when, when I'd be, like, engaged in the flesh to fight and that that voice would go don't do it don't do it the first guy I led to Christ I, I had his I probably shouldn't tell you the details but I had him on the ground with my foot on his throat and his arm ready to break and I was about to snap his elbow I had it bent so it would just a little bit more tweak and right in that very moment the Holy Spirit said I wouldn't do that and I, had I was a new Christian. I was like, you wouldn't do this. Who's talking anyway? I knew it wasn't me. I was like ready to just go, snap. And it was a school bully, and I thought, it, he deserves it. And the Lord goes, I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, well, what would you do? Now, I'm not saying this out loud. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a fight. I am not talking out loud like a kooky person. I'm just talking to God inside, you know. What would you do? He goes, I'd help him up. Oh, my gosh, you've got to be kidding. I mean, to a fighter, that's like the, the most idiotic, stupid thing you could ever think of is you would help up a guy you just flipped into the locker and, you know, got ready to snap him, and you're going to help him. What? I'm thinking, I'm, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, I'm gone. I'm gone. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And I looked at the guy, and I had it, my foot real tight here. And here, this is the blood choke. This is the wind choke. I have both covered. Only takes six seconds for the blood choke till they go out, black out. And the Holy Spirit goes, let up. I'm thinking, no, bad. Just let him go under. We'll talk after he comes back too. They're a little disoriented. No. They let up just a little. I still kept my foot there. I'm not a big man of faith yet. I was new, okay? 
I let up a little and I go, you know, I, I'm a new Christian. I don't think God wants me to snap your arm right now. And he's a little bit getting a little blue in the face, so I, I let up a little more. And he looks at me, and he looks totally shocked. Like, what? You know, he's a fighter, I'm a fighter. This is not what you say in the middle of a fight. <laughs> I think God wants me not to snap your arm. In fact, I think he wants me to help you up. I can't believe I'm saying this. And so I slept my foot up. I, but I kept his arm just in case he got cocky. I know it sounds bad. I'm not a big man of faith yet. So I go, okay. You're gonna not, you're gonna, if you get up to fight, I'm going to, you know. And he, he looked at me in disbelief. And I helped him to his feet. And then I find out he's this tall. <laughs> I had never stood next to him yet. I was crouched down at my locker when he's picking on me. And I flipped him into the locker. And so I go, he goes, God is really real, isn't he? I said, do you think I'd help you up if he wasn't? And he goes, no, you've never helped anybody up. He already knew my reputation. For, he's like, no, you've never done that. I said, well, I'm a new Christian, and you need Jesus too. He goes, yeah, I do. How do I get Jesus? And I led him to Christ. I ran to the, to the little Bible study we had, told our assistant pastor, Billy Leonard, Bill, Bill, Bill. I, I, I went, got in a fight, picked the, flipped the guy, and then the Lord said, don't do that, and I helped him up, and I couldn't believe I did, and then he said, how do I, how do I get Jesus? So I led him to the Lord. He couldn't come tonight, but he's going to come next week. And he goes, that was really good. Is Next time, skip the... <laughs> but that was really good, leading him to the Lord. I was like... I'm new at this. I didn't know fighting was like not in the, you know. You read the Bible, there's a lot of fighting. David fought like crazy. Goliath and all those guys. But it was for the Lord. Not to just be a jerk. I was pretty good at the jerky fighting. But my middle name is David, by the way, just in case. I always identify with his stories. But see, I know God's real because that voice speaks. His voice, his spirit says so stop. And if we do stop sinning, people start to go, there must be a God. There must be a God. If you stop in the middle of a fight because you're convicted, even though you started the fight, you say, look, I'm not supposed to do this. God's telling me stop. It's a witness to those people that, wow, there must, you know, there's something to this. But see, if we don't stop sinning and we just continue, then what difference are we in the world? Same old, same old. We're just doing the same junk that they're doing, and you can't really show Christ to people that they need a Savior when you don't let Him stop you. It's really important. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.